Hey everyone. Yeah, the Trudeau liberals are desperate to shut down and silence anyone that opposes that leftist ideology, that collectivist, that globalist ideology that him and his cohorts are trying to jam down the Canadian people's throat. Make no mistake about it, they're going to do whatever the hell they can. And once again, the people that come from left, that's the thing when I see people that argue from that left-right paradigm. Listen, and I've said this many times in the past, you'll know when an authoritarian right-winger comes at you because a right-winger is not going to hide behind false pretenses of benevolence, compassion, or trickery. They'll be coming at you full force, head-on, in a direct confrontation. And there'll be no confusion about it. It's those on the left, like I say, the collectivists, the socialists, the communists, the globalists. These are the ones, like I say, because they don't have the physical prowess, I mean, hello, just look at Trudeau, or the mental competence, rigidity or resolve, they use the pretense of benevolence, compassion, and their victim status or mentality to trick you into aligning with them. Like I say, these are the people that are most devious among us. An authoritarian right winger, like I say, the very ground will tremble when they're rushing at you. And at the very least, not saying that's a good thing. You don't want those people running at you. But at the very least, when you feel that ground tremble, well, at least you'll have a little bit of warning. Whether you want to stay and fight or flee for your life. The Trudeau types or this New Zealand prime minister, like I say, they come at you. They want to get close to you. They want to gain your trust. They want to manipulate your mind. Like I say, they lack the physical prowess or the actual mechanical capabilities to impose their wills on you. So they use, like I say, the power of manipulation and distorting of the language and playing with your heart and toying with your emotions. These are emotional manipulators to the nth degree. And they are currently the biggest threat to your social and economic freedoms. Headline out of CBC News, Politics. Trudeau set to sign New Zealand PM's pledge to tackle violent extremist online content. It's being reported by Salama Shivi, Shivji, May 14th, 2019. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is expected to sign an international pledge in Paris Wednesday aimed at getting governments and social media companies working together to curb the spread of violent and extremist content online. Trudeau is attending the Christchurch call meeting in Paris tomorrow. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, who is co-chairing the meeting with French President Emmanuel Macron, is expected to cite the massacre of 51 Muslim worshippers in two New Zealand mosques in March as she pushes for a sweeping agreement to combat terrorist content disseminated on social media. In a press release announcing the Paris visit last week, Trudeau voiced his fear that social media platforms increasingly are being weaponized as tools to incite, publish, and broadcast extremist violence and hatred. He called for a coordinated global response to tackle the problem. And while the details of the non-binding pledge up for approval in Paris tomorrow are sketchy at this point, the New York Times reports it will call on social media firms to examine software that directs users to violent content and ask them to share more data with government authorities to find and eliminate violent extremist material. So once again, they're trying to use the power of government, which once again, folks, is a representation of monopoly of force or violence in any geographical area. They're trying to use a direct threat of force or violence to impose their will on these social media platforms as a means to silence or suppress people that they perceive as their political or ideological opponents. In reality, that's what this represents, folks. Don't make any mistake about it. Trudeau doesn't give a fuck about any victims and neither does that just sin to give a shit about any of these victims or people that are being killed. Well, I mean, are they, are they putting out this kind of rhetoric in defense of all the Christians that have been attacked in Pakistan? No, of course not. So this is politically driven narratives and ideologically driven constructs to divide and conquer. The summit came together in the wake of gun attacks on two Christchurch mosques in March that left 51 dead. Video of the tax was live streamed for nearly 17 minutes on social media and was subsequently uploaded thousands of times as social media companies struggled to remove it. The leaders of the United Kingdom, Ireland, Norway, Indonesia and Senegal and the President of the European Commission 
will also be in Paris along with high-level officials from Facebook, Twitter, Google, and Microsoft. All are expected to endorse the agreement. So once again, folks, when you have big government proponents and these crony corporation proponents coming together to silence and suppress voices, well, that's never going to be a benefit for most. Matter of fact, the only people that it truly benefits are the authoritarians among us. The United States, which has been reluctant to regulate the Internet due to concerns about limiting freedom of speech, was not invited to attend the Christchurch Call Summit and is not expected to sign the pledge. The United States, once again, that last bastion of freedom in this whole goddamn planet, folks. And yeah, when people say, well, the U.S. is the last holdout. They don't have a socialized health care system and they don't sign up to these like the Paris Accord you know, the climate change bullshit, right, Where you or, or carbon taxes where you're just constantly plundering the productive wealth and income of the working poor, or the global compact for my, like I say, and, and once again, the only country on the entire planet, well, I guess except for Switzerland, that has an entrenched firm grasp of the Second Amendment, the right to possess and bear arms, which is the only thing that you have in defense against authoritarians. Like I say, that's that last bastion. And when I hear people out there saying that, well, the U.S. has to get closer on board to align with the rest of the Western countries that, what, have turned more socialist, more collectivist, more communist, more globalist in nature. Hell no! I want that last holy, just like every winner. There's only ever a one winner in any situation or scenario, right? Well, I mean, unless it's a tie. That's about it. But I would take away that exception of the tie. For you to be a leader means you have to be an exception to everyone else. And I'm glad that the U.S. is an exception to the rest of the West that's conforming to collective ideologies and top-down authoritarianism. I don't want the U.S. to ever conform or align with the West if, if, it, if it comes to being more authoritarian or conformist to collective ideology. I want the U.S. to remain steadfast. I, want, I don't care if it's under Trump or whoever comes to power at some, some point in time. I want the U.S. to remain steadfast in their promotion of genuine individual rights, freedoms, and liberties. Because that means, that's a representation of being up here. I don't want them to ever race down to where we are. And as a Canadian, we're the way the fuck down here. Matter of fact, someday I'm probably going to seek out, and it's probably going to be someday soon, where I'm going to try to get myself a citizenship to the U.S. Because I'm a Canadian that feels like I was born in the wrong goddamn country. And while that wasn't my fault, well, I can at least correct it by going where I'm surrounded with more people that respect my individual rights, freedoms, and liberties. Arden has long insisted her push to control the amplification of hate online is not about curbing freedom of expression. Oh, really? What is it about? Huh? Just finger wagging? Well, apparently it's not just that because you implemented a gun ban in your country where you caused a whole lot of people that didn't cause any harm to nobody to now be criminals. So you actually caused some real genuine social harm in your country by using your collective groupthink or one-size-fits-all approach to try to prevent bad things from happening. Every authoritarian and every tin pot dictator thought along the same kind of lines. That right does not include the freedom to broadcast mass murder, she wrote in a recent column. This is not about undermining or limiting freedom of speech. It is about these companies and how they operate. UK Prime Minister Theresa May is expected to use her time in Paris to call on governments and social media companies to work together in blocking hateful content. The internet is global and online threats have no borders. Companies should be held to consistent international standards so their customers enjoy the same level of protection wherever they live, May said in a statement. Oh, really? International standards, huh? Well, what about, what about if Saudi Arabia or a bunch of them at the UN decide that their majority status, if they vote in a majority manner, that they want to impose their kind of restrictions on your freedom of speech, huh? Would you agree with that, Teresa? Like I say... These people, it's just political rhetoric, folks. And like I say, stop falling for this nonsense, would you please? At the very least, I wish Canadians would show me fucking for once that you at least have the intelligence to understand what the fuck is going on. Because what I'm seeing out there, like I say, time and time again, is most Canadians are completely fucking clueless and out of touch with reality completely and just go along with whatever their political or media masters tell them. I don't know. If, if your thought leaders are the only people that you pay attention to, well, well, like I say, it's bad enough for you to do so, but you're causing a whole lot of harm to a whole lot of people by remaining in your ignorant bliss or your ideological conformity. 
And like I say, at some point in time, well, we're, we're trying our words. We're trying, I'm trying my words. We're all trying our words. We're all trying our best to just use our words to push back against this stuff. But once again, once you've packed enough people into the corner and, and, and the words aren't working anymore, well, like I say, I, I think, I, to be to honest with you, I think some of these people want to create massive civil or even global conflict at this point in time because I guess to them it's like, well, that's how we get people distracted and it'll actually grow the GDP at the same time. Hey, World War One, World War Two, right? I don't know. Like I say, these people, they're not the ones that are going to get into these battles. Like I say, they'll be still off in their gated communities, living their entitled lifestyle, off the proceeds of theft taken from you, the average wage slave or tax servant in this country. So, like I say, to them, it's like, yeah, they'll ramp up, they'll stir up that pot as much as they can because they're not the ones that are going to have to suffer the consequences or the fallout or ramification when massive conflict finally does ensue. If only Canadians, if only people in the West would start pivoting to and focus their attention on these people in the media or the political class that are actually the ones that are stirring the pot and causing this kind of division and supporting that kind of authoritarian ideology, which is a representation of collectivism. Like I say, these are the people that are your true enemies. Until you start focusing and pivoting your attention on them, if you remain mired and, and allowing them to manipulate you like a puppet so you're fighting back and forth amongst your peers or people that you perceive as, as your enemies or like your neighbor because... <laughs> You know he has a different opinion than you. It's like I say, yeah, go ahead. Keep fighting amongst yourself. Like I say, these central planners, these authoritarians, these hacks in the media or the political room class, they're laughing all the way to the bank while you're distracted and divided amongst yourselves. When are you going to wake up? When are you going to realize that's a reality and start holding these people's feet to the fire rather than bickering amongst yourself and giving them the free pass? It's a Canadian Libertarian, and I love liberty.